The media hopes to absolve Democrats for their crime crisis. Let's get in their way. Happy New Year, and welcome to The Jason Rant Show, presented by None Better Tax Resolution. Come on. Democrats refuse to take responsibility for the crime crisis that they caused after the death of George Floyd. Now, they're pointing to 2023 statistics to absolve themselves of blame, arguing that conservatives, well, we made up the crime crisis narrative. That's not just a dishonest argument. It shows a new depth in Democrat deflection. And ironically, it does end up proving that Democrats have blood on their hands. After reaching a record high number of homicides in Democrat-run cities all across the country, 2023 experienced about a 13% fewer number than the previous year of homicides. ABC News framed that statistic around public polling, polling that shows Americans are deeply concerned with crime. Citing a recent Gallup poll, crime analyst Jeff Asher told ABC News this. 70-something percent of Americans think crime is rising this year, and 70-something percent of Americans in this case just happen to be wrong. And then New York-based journalist Ahmed Baba used the ABC News piece to pretend that fears about crime are completely unfounded claiming there's a stark disconnect between how a lot of Americans feel and what's actually happening. Disinformation is distorting our perception of reality. Hmm. He said the disconnect was a result of, quote, overt disinformation from white right-wing organizations like Fox News. And he posited that when crime stories are spotlighted in mainstream media, people assume crime is high. Hmm. Crime is high, and we aren't wrong to be concerned. We're simply looking at our cities the way that we're supposed to. Context is key to understanding crime statistics. We're seeing fewer homicides when compared to a historically high number of murders between 2020 and 2022. That detail is incredibly important. Surveys reveal we're concerned with high crime primarily because current figures are so high compared to the pre-COVID era. You see, during that time, law enforcement was fully funded. They had broader operational latitude. And we can't forget that in a bid to deflect responsibility for the crime surge, a consequence of their defund police strategy, Democrats originally blamed the uptick in criminal activity on COVID. Remember that? Therefore, it's logical to look toward 2018 or 2019 as a benchmark year for a more accurate comparison of crime rates. And the numbers are less impressive when you do that. Annual homicides, for example, in Denver, They were down 4% in 2023, but it's still 14% higher than what it was in 2019. Similarly, look at homicides in Albuquerque. 2023 saw a drop of 21%. Okay, that's good. And yet residents know that they're still 86% higher than what it was in 2018. So it went down, yay, that's good, but nowhere near where it used to be. It's hard to imagine record high homicides continuing forever particularly since many of the cities hit the hardest, started to reverse their radical left approach to the criminal justice system. Even when viewed through a lens favorable to Democrats, as ABC News tried to do, the data points a damning picture of their policies. New Orleans had the highest big city homicide rate in 2022. All across the country, it was 65%. That was the hike from 2019 to 2020. Philadelphia's rate jumped by almost 50%. Atlanta's climbed by 75%. These cities had a lot in common. They were run by Democrats, Democrats who embraced the defund movement. The quicker those cities abandoned the radical left reforms, well, guess what? The better they recovered in 2023. New Orleans invested in technology like drones, all to make police easy, safer. Philadelphia refunded its police department with mayoral candidates last year, or two years ago, condemning the defund movement entirely. Atlanta increased police staffing and used data to determine which neighborhoods to send more officers to. San Antonio, let's look at them. They did the precise opposite of what Democrats wanted. They proactively policed. Their homicides went down 12%. To be clear, the picture isn't bright everywhere. Seattle, for example, saw a historic number of homicides in 2023. Washington, D.C. numbers, yeah, they're bad. They're up 36%. But still, it turns out that allowing police officers to actually do their jobs is effective in reducing crime. Who knew? 
Democrats, of course, are loath to acknowledge that the policies are at the root of the crime crisis. And yet it's clear as day. Distancing from the radical left's influence on the criminal justice system has demonstrably enhanced our safety. The mainstream media shouldn't give Democrats or their mouthpieces a free pass on this issue. If these networks refuse to frame the narrative accurately, okay, it's up to us then to spread the truth. Because there's still a mountain of work ahead to dismantle radical left policies if we want to get back to the lower crime rates of the pre-COVID ever. Jason Rance here with Greg Nunn, your local tax expert and advocate. Greg, thank you so much for coming on. Hey, Jason, great to be with you again and talk about these tax issues. So some folks out there have the IRS calling them nonstop or even coming to their door. What do you recommend they do? You are protected by statute, by law, that when you have representation, they have to deal with your representative. And I am acting in your best interest when I'm dealing with the IRS. And I tell you, you don't want to talk to them, I'll just stress you out. If you're having trouble with the IRS, then call Greg Nunn. Greg might be able to negotiate a settlement for up to 85% off the original amount owed, and that includes penalties and interest. Call Greg Nunn today. Did you like that commentary? Make sure you subscribe to the podcast of The Jason Rand Show. Get it at ktth.com or wherever it is you download your podcasts.